Wikipedia, looking it up, said all over the world, of the population, 25% had no formal education. It's 25% according to Wikipedia in the world. So I thought, what about deaf folks? So the estimate is 80% with no formal education for deaf people around the world. 25% versus 80%? Uh, so that is, it doesn't even come close, those statistics. So, the American with Disabilities Act, you know, when that was passed prior to that, um, studies that showed in, it was like 63% of deaf people did not have employment. And then when the ADA passed, of disabled people it is, and then it arose still of disabled people that were not employed after the ADA. Statistics show that, you know, we're talking about all levels of disabilities, mental health, mental illness, deafblind, mobility, and in terms of having equal responsibilities and higher numbers like into management, but from 71 to 77, and then, oh, and then in terms of the ADA, you know, like you know, MR, There was a rapid decline in 1980. So here, currently in America, there's five to ten thousand. Federal, state level. Five to ten thousand, five to ten thousand. So how many now? There's like three hundred. 377 billion. So we use that number to come up with our statistics, and we think, okay, there's no hard and fast numbers. And as for just everyday ASL users, you know, just what would be the guesstimate? Say 400,000 ASL users in America? Maybe a fair guess. Uh, but using that statistic, we come up with 665,000 out of the U.S using that are ASL users. That's how many of us know that. And how many of those actually reflect us is zero. A good friend of mine uh, was taking, you know, having taken on foster deaf children, and I thought, oh my gosh, okay. So the oldest one being Dakota, and then I was looking into this foster situation, and this person said, you know, as far as deaf child in the foster system, they're like the last to be adopted. They're always the last, statistically. Before, those that are, like, you know, those that are hard to manage, they, they'll be adopted first way before a deaf child. That was interesting. I thought, wait a minute. You mean, of all the statistics, Do we own the schools for the deaf? I mean, do we dictate, decide, do they, do they actually reflect our community? Not at all. So, back to the 600 of registered voters here in America, 600,000. What is special about America? We go back in history. But also, too, we have to think about our governing, the way in which our self-governing measures. That's the American dream. You know, Europe has that, but our self-governing dream. You know, it's like we can't be, you know, the common people. You know, how do they manage and run themselves? It's like, no, they can't. That's been the philosophy, the European philosophy. Uh, but yet they have their own resources, they're taught and trained, and that's handed down from generation to generation to be able to run a business. And that 
common thread of thought um, today that has actually become the American dream where you work hard, earn a living, and become successful of managing yourself as a citizen. So the 650,000 statistics, you know, the taxation without representation, you know, it's like paying taxes, like, yeah, that's how most of us feel. I mean, myself too. I mean, I pay, I pay my taxes as well. But, um, okay, so we take all the statistics in mind, and also, too, the key to the American dream is how do we make it successful? Our values and our freedom and having the public for all, you know, through education, we become public servants, getting our education. That's very noble, that part of our dream. It's a very important part of our dream. We're actually not involved in that part of the dream. So our way of life, I have to be honest, you know, death clubs have folded across the nation, left and right, schools for the deaf are closing. Maybe there's three or four schools, you know, that are really good, that have a good reputation around the nation. Sure, there's problems and there's concerns about, you know, how to support the schools. So what's to be done? Sure, we have technology, but yet we've become so disconnected. I, you know, y'all are fabulous people, but I wish though that, you know, it's like when we see each other, it's like we don't really have that, like, commonality. It's like, oh yes, <laughs> we need to speak to each other. It's just, it's just not there. That need for communication. You can have a healthy community, but like the fabric of a healthy community. Let me just show you what that might look like. Like here we have a web. It's strong. It's a healthy community representing representing a healthy community. Each intersection of line and connection is representing you. Everybody connected, interconnected, intraconnected. But the sad story in America for hearing people too is the ongoing struggle, the sprawl within the community, having cars people living far apart from each other. And here, it's a struggle for hearing people, you know, being lonely in the suburbs. And you know, in Europe, while it's very, you know, crowded, you've got, you know, the greater family living together, but yet there's, the web is very strong, whereas ours is weak, and it's ironic. We're becoming, you know, hearing people are like deaf people in the, in the sense that they feel like more isolated. Yes, we are very connected. I know all of us are connected within our community, but like the deaf club or deaf community, let me show you what that's looking like. Uh, that's us, we're more fragmented. That is us, that is the depiction. We're strong, strong in some areas, yes, but yet there's areas in which we're fledgling. It's like a spider, you know, a spider on caffeine, like, I don't know if you're a coffee drinker here, but... Now, just envision this, and... Can we get out of the web easy? I mean, most of the time, we just go through and not miss. We can't catch any bugs in the webs, because there's too many holes. We're just holding on to a few leaders that are very spread out. It's very fragmented, and worse yet, we punish ourselves for it. It's like, okay, those deaf people are lazy. There's just not enough. Come on, come on. We get this message, it's just not enough, not enough. And it's like, you know, and we chew each other out for it. And like now, the internet with Facebook and all these other social mechanisms for connecting, that can never replace the physical connectivity. It can entice us and enhance it, but there's no way it can physically replace the human element. I'm going to tell you a story here. My daughter, Stephanie, Stephanie's 11. She moved from South Dakota, Indianapolis, big city, you know. And after a while, I guess after a couple of years, one night I was sitting and chatting with her. She said, you know, when I grow up, I want to move out of Salem, a small town that she had lived in in South Dakota. I was like, oh, my. Yeah, she wanted to move back to her. I thought, well, 
there's only a couple of thousand there. It's a pretty town, but um, I love Salem. Not, nothing bad against it, but I was like, I'm shocked that she said that. I was like, why? Why do you want to do that? Because it was secure. It was safe. I could easily go run and play, go to the store, go get bread, drive my bike, go be with the community, go swimming, all on my own. And here, I've got to ask you, I've got to beg you, I want to go join this friend or that friend. You know, that got my attention. She was talking about a town that's like so small, but you know, that's part of her memories. So when you're senior citizens, what are you think you'll be doing in the future? Won't be able to drive, you may have, you know, dementia, you know, be at home, you know, sure you'll have your community, your retired community. Yes, we'll have those. Oh yes. We'll have all those. But there'll be isolation going on from the town. You won't be able to just walk to the store, you know, you'll be within that senior citizen community. So a life really happening, the comings and goings of every day, you'll be there isolated within the deaf community, within a senior citizen community. You'll have to ask somebody, you know, well, I'm lonely, I need more interaction. And you'll actually, you know, be possibly forgotten about. So that really impacted me. It's like, there's just no way I can't let that happen. And so to ask ourselves, are we worth it? I mean, are we? Are we important enough? Are we worth it to have our own day of death community? I mean, sure, there's problems. I mean, okay, should we just give up and abandon and leave the earth and give up on our dreams? No. We are worth it because we have a lot to offer the world, and we know it. So, if we are actually worth it, then we have to do something about it. If we want to be successful and equal, Linda Bowen said that, then we have to, you know, pick ourselves up by the bootstraps and do something to... Empowerment comes first, to be collaborate and work together cohesively, and economically work together. So the vision is, is to have, you know, a big community where our home is central. And say you have a hose, just and from that community, you like to say the water is turned on. It's like we're a big lake. From the lake is this hose filling that lake. And then if you pick up the hose, it's sprouting out. So then you try to dig up some soil so the water can still keep going down. And then it, the community continues to grow. So your money, your resources from every day, you know, you spend them on different things. You know, the world really doesn't care. And so, goal here is to take back your resources and to invest them in one community. You know, it's where like, you make that community what you want for the natural resources. So we have to start there, but you may say, okay, well, there's, okay, there's oil there. I want something bigger. I want a bigger town. Well, this is not for me. I want a town that's already built and has all this, but you have to start somewhere. So if, if you want something like New York City, then you have to start and say in a small town. That's how it started this a long time ago. It's, you know, it's taken thousands and thousands of efforts to make it is what it is today. So an ASL community, an ASL town, that's what we can see in terms of a less fragmented community becoming stronger and the web being strong again by having this community stronger and the web being strong again by having this community, physical contact with each other. And there was, I re reiterate, there would not be just a deaf only. There would be, it'd be innovative with interpreters and all kinds of inclusive, inclusive community. And yes, people would be learning ASL well. And uh, sometimes, yes, there's no patients. No patients will get turned off from somebody trying to learn ASL. Uh, but that's often the tendency. I certainly understand that. But in this community, if you want economic resources to flourish, and people coming in, and they're just starting to learn sign language, you know, how might you react? The in instinct may be to reject them. 
but instead would be welcoming because this is a way of attaining economic stability. That's just one small example of being, you know, it's like having a McDonald's there and uh, where everyone feels safe and you're not feeling overwhelmed. It's setting up a community so that you can work together with, say, you know, the directors of the corporate franchise and learning how to set that up, you know, video phones, so they learn, we teach them to have this cohesive atmosphere within our community. And they realize what we as deaf people offer them by supporting their business, and that's how this idea can flourish. So I encourage you to envision, yes, it's like where you don't have to be stuck, say for example, in your traditional separate roles, of be it teaching, or interpreting, but you can be anything you want. I'm serious. I really remember where, for example, um, you know, looking at the map and thinking, well, where do I want to teach and where do I want to be? And where I really want, where do I want to be when I grow up? And I thought, actually, I'd really like, I mean, can I do this? Like, set up a kennel? Well, sure, you can do that. Why not? Uh, it's like the possibilities that I realized were endless. And the light bulb went off. It's like we actually can pursue your passion and not have to just tolerate <coughs> what is the status quo. Things can actually be interconnected within such a community. I mean, all of you would like to be board members running it. I mean, if you don't like the school, like you can have a bilingual, total immersion ASL school with everybody benefiting from the resources that everyone has to offer. And the children would experience a totally different world. It would be, they would be building something bigger than we could even imagine in the future. I mean, that's a promise that is guaranteed. So do you want to join me on this? Help me build this community? To live there and see it flourish? And expand to other communities? Thank you so much.